Here is the easiest way to install it alongside Windows using a helper library that comes with the official installation medium. In the end, when you boot the computer, you have the option to pick which operating system you want to boot. First download Arch Linux and prepare a bootable USB drive with it. Restart the computer and boot into the USB. For me it's done by pressing the escape button couple of times until I am in the startup menu. There I open the boot menu and the USB is the second option. First check for internet access with pinkgoogle.com. If you have a similar result and you can type in the console, you don't have internet. Either connect the internet cable to the computer or follow these steps to connect to Wi-Fi. Type IWCTL, then device list, then station, the name of the device, scan. You have auto completion by pressing tap. Then station, the name of the device, get networks. Then station, the name of the device, connect, the name of the Wi-Fi. And type your password for the Wi-Fi. Type exit and ping google.com should work. Before starting the helper library, we need to partition the disk. To find the name of the disk, type lsblk. By looking at the column with size, I see that my disk is NVMe 0N1 with 465GB. Once you have the name, type cfdisk slash dev slash the name. Here you can see the partitions of the disk. You can move through the partitions by pressing up and down. And at the bottom of the screen you see a menu. You can move in the menu by pressing left and right. Currently I have my Windows and Linux installation. I'll delete my Linux installation, which is the last three partitions. I go over each partition and in the menu below I press delete. Now this is deleted and I go over to the next one. This is deleted and now the last one is deleted. Now you should have enough free space to create your Linux partitions. Before continuing, you should be really careful what you are deleting. Be sure to back up anything that is important. And it's best to follow this tutorial on an old machine that has nothing important on it. Just to be safe. Highlight the free space and hit new. For the partition size, type 1 GB. Then another partition which will be for the root with about 90 GB. You can pick less. Then for the home partition, just hit enter whatever it has by default. It will be all of the free space. Now go to the boot partition that is 1 gigabyte and go to type to change its type and go up to FE system. Hit enter and you are done. In the menu below go to right, hit enter and only type yes if you are sure you have done everything correctly and you will not use anything important. And then go to quit. Now we can start the helper library by typing arch install. Go down to this configuration and hit enter, partitioning, then manual partitioning, then select your disk, mine is the 500GB SSD. Now find the newly created partitions, go to the boot partition that is 1GB, select it with enter and then assign mount point. Type slash boot, now go to the root partition that is about 90GB, assign mount point, it should be just the slash. Then for the home partition, that is the biggest, assign mount point slash home. Now go back to the boot partition and mark it for formatting. Mark the root partition to be formatted as well and the home partition if you want it to be deleted and cleaned up. If you are using an existing home partition, just don't mark it for formatting and deletion. Confirm and exit. Back. For Arch install language, we leave the default. For mirrors, select mirror region and find your region. You can search by typing the slash and then your region. Go back. For locales, leave the defaults. Uh, ignore disk encryption. For bootloader, we pick grub. Leave swap as true. For host name, pick whatever name you want the machine to have. The host name is this right here. This is your username, this is the host name in the terminal. I will leave it as YouTube. Pick a root password, then go to user account, add a user, enter a username, enter a password, repeat the password, then yes if you want sudo privileges. 
If you want, you can add another user. And when you're done, confirm and exit. Now profile is where you have the most customization. Press type, go to desktop. And here you have most of the popular options. I recommend for new users KDE Plasma or GNOME. I personally use i3, which is a Tiling window manager. Go into YouTube and see each one of them. For this tutorial, I'll pick GNOME. Then go to graphics driver. If you're using Nvidia, pick proprietary. If you're on a virtual machine, pick virtual box. For AMD and Intel, they have only one option. And for the greeter, you can pick SDDM, but I'll leave it the default GDM. Then go to audio, select pipeware. Kernels leave the default. Now additional packages. Type git, Firefox and Alacrity with spaces between them. Alacrity is a terminal. Press enter. Now network configuration. Pick network manager. For time zone, find your time zone. Then go to optional repositories. Pick multi-lip if you're planning to use Steam, Wine or other proprietary software. Later on, I'll tell you how to use safe configuration. When you're done, press install. If we press enter now, it will format the partitions we selected. So just in case backup anything important. And now we just have to wait it to finish setting up everything. Once it's complete, it will ask you if you want to root in the newly created installation. Hit yes, because we want to set up dual boot. We need to find the boot partition of our Windows installation. So type lsblk. For me, the Windows boot partition is NVMe 0N1P1, which is about 100 megabytes. Type mount slash dev slash the name of the partition, then slash mount. Now that it's mounted, find boot mgfw.fe file. It should be with the same path as my case. If not, you need to find it. Typing ls and the path just confirms it actually exists. Now on a piece of paper, write down the path without the slash mnt. We will need it later. Now open with nano in etc grpd 40 custom. In this file, we will type the menu entry for Windows in the grp menu. You will see the comments above. Below them, start typing menu entry, Windows and everything that you're seeing here. The path after chain loader is the same as the one you wrote down on the piece of paper. Here, change this later with UID. Now we will change it. To save the file, hit Ctrl X, then Y and then Enter. Now type group probe target FSUID and the actual path to the bootmgfw.fe file. This time it's with the slash mnt. Below it you will see the UUID for the boot partition for the Windows system. Write it down on a piece of paper. Now go back with nano to the 40 custom file. Replace this, change this later with UID with Replace it with the UID you wrote down on the piece of paper. To save, hit Ctrl X, then Y, then Enter. Then type group mkconfig o boot group group dot cfg. You should get something like this. If you want, you can open with nano the new group cfg file and see if you can find the Windows menu entry if it was actually added. Now type exit and reboot and you should boot up in the group menu. The first option is the Arch Linux system, then the last one is the Windows system. We can open up the Windows one by highlighting it and hitting Enter, and Windows loaded. If we reboot and go back and pick this time Arch Linux, we can see that Arch Linux has booted. You can connect to the Wi-Fi. We have Firefox installed. We can even test by opening a YouTube video, and we have audio. If you restarted and it booted directly into Windows and you didn't have this grub menu, reboot and in my case I press escape to go to the startup menu, then to the boot menu. Now in the boot menu, to boot manually into the grub menu, you should see somewhere around here uh, something with the name of Linux or grub. Just select it and you should boot into the grub menu. And for the next time, you can go into BIOS settings 
and choose it as the default option. If you don't see group here, like in my case, as a temporary solution, you can pick boot from file. You will have some options, find the one with this configuration. Select group, then this option, then group.f. For a long-term solution, boot back into the USB. Type lsblk and mount your Linux partitions. Mount the root partition into slash mnt, mount the boot partition into mnt boot, and mount the home partition into mnt home with the mount command. For me, the boot partition is the one gigabyte one, the root partition is the 90 gigabyte one, and the home partition is the 188 gigabyte one. Then arch root slash mnt. Now type this grub install command. You should see that no errors are reported. Now type exit, then u mount dash capital R slash mnt, and then reboot. And this time your machine should actually boot up into the group menu. Now to go back to the installation library, if you want, you can save the configuration by clicking save configuration. You can pick to save only the configuration or only the credentials. The reason you can ignore, for example, the credentials is because it will save it. It will save them in text files and you may not want to have your passwords in text files. For this tutorial, I'll save all and for directory, I'll pick the root directory. You can exit now by pressing abort. Go into your root directory and by typing arch install to dashes config, the user config, then to dashes CREDS and the user credentials file will load your helper library with all of the configurations that you saved. 